And we're back. My shirt's still waking me up. Isn't it pretty? I just love it. I think it's so bold. I love a bold print. I'm a bold person. So if you're following along reading Almost Otis by me, Dusty Thompson, if you haven't bought your copy, please go on Amazon and buy your copy now. You can probably get it like tomorrow if you order it tonight. We are on page 125 at the blog dated Sunday, June 10th, 2012. Isn't this a Tom T. Hall song? Question mark. At 4.45 the other morning, I woke to such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. The noise seemed to involve wood, ceramic, and metal. I was soon to discover it also included denim and whatever material constitutes a tractor supply hat. The dad had fallen like a redwood in the forest except with more cursing. This couldn't have come at a worse time as when I awoke, I realized I had been sleeping on my right arm. It was numb and I couldn't move it. I am a typically unadventurous sleeper. Until my significant weight loss, I used a CPAP machine to help me breathe and I had to learn to sleep, number one, on my back and number two, without moving. Making my bed in the morning is not an exhaustive task. My sister has said it's slightly creepy how I don't move, like a dead person. However, for the past month or so, I have been tossing and turning like Bobby Lewis. Some of you will get that joke, others will need to ask their parents or grandparents. Anyway, I rush into the dad's bedroom and see him on the floor. Having somehow taken the entire contents of his bookshelf and the top of his dresser except for the TV, thank goodness. When I attempted to help him, he insisted he could get up himself and lurched away from me from my one good arm and proceeded to get up on one knee and summarily collapse onto the floor in many more curse words than a truck stop waitress who has been done wrong by some no good trucker with a double name. Trying to help him with my good arm while flapping my other arm around to get the circulation flowing and him wiggling all over the floor threw Lulu into a state of confusion and happiness as she bounded from her doggy bed wanting to play. Have you ever tried to help lift an overweight man who is fighting, trying to fight you, using your one good arm and fending off the dog? No, Dustin, just you. And while it may be funny now, it was most assuredly not funny then. Well, except maybe to Lulu. I started to laugh, but my dad, his look made me kind of stop that. He were not happy. I felt bad about him falling and I know older people can break things when they do fall. He complains about aches and pains nonstop, so I knew I could look forward to an uptick in the woe is mean later that night and especially the next day and even the day after that. As someone who knows somewhat the pain of working out, I can tell you the next day is not as bad as the day after. When I used to do kickboxing, poor y'all, that was just Terrible and painful and awful. My girl Kelsey, can, she can back me up on that. Ain't that right, Kelsey? Although his falling and my working out are not the same, they both involve sweating and someone on the floor cursing and usually followed by someone regaling all and sundry with the specifics of the incident and detailing the aches and pains long after interest has waned and even the memory of the pain has subsided. Full disclosure, I did kickboxing for about five months from October 2009 to February 2010. I still talk about the pain. Yes, Virginia, I see the irony. And it's funny that I mentioned that before I read that. Because here it is in 2020 and it's still in my mind. It was awful. I hated every minute of it. Of course, he is still talking about the fall and the aches and pains. And it's been like a week and a half. His toe hurts. His ankle hurts. Both knees hurt. His ribs, thighs, shoulder, lungs, kidney, uterus hurt. This is in addition to his typical refrain of my back, a double S, and neck hurt. Oh, I didn't do that in his voice. My back, a double S, and neck hurt. When I asked if he has taken a pill, for which he has a prescription, he always says, Nah, it's not that bad yet. Really? To hear him, you would think the pain was mind-numbing. He has likened it to childbirth. He has actually said on a scale of, on a scale of 1 to 10, this is a 25. But in his estimation, it's not enough to take a pill. Get over yourself, old man. What do you think is going to happen? Just because more than your fair share of relatives on the Thompson side, have become pill addicts doesn't mean you will. I am hardcore anti-drug, but even I started acting like those sketchy best friends in a coming of age movie saying things like, come on man, it's no big deal, it's just one pill. I've even resorted to just getting one out, putting it in his hand, and giving him a bottle of water. No questions, no judgments. Just like one of those meetings you see on TV where you tell your name and your addiction. They don't have one for thrift store shopping, I checked. They should have one for gossiping, but those kinds of meetings usually take place in the church, and although we discuss how we feel guilty about talking about people, we end up talking about people while describing why we felt we had to, and it would be sort of breaking even situation, and nobody wants that. 
Not even for really good chest pie. Okay, maybe for really, really good chest pie. And if any of y'all make a chest pie or a buttermilk pie, mail me one for real. You can't get that out here. And although he is prone to exaggeration, I really do think he is stove up a little as he turned down the last two invitations to breakfast at Jason's, his favorite place, as well as the latest trip to Walmart, leaving me to navigate the waters of Little Guatemala, Mano a Nada. Como se dice, alone? I felt like the hero in an action film who has been abandoned at the gates of the castle slash den of thieves slash cave on a mission from some hard to please despot who requires things I wouldn't normally buy like yarn, double extra large underwear, Stetson cologne, and denture adhesive. I can only imagine what people were thinking when they looked at my cart. I used to say buggy, but that can be shamed out of you by New Englanders who call them carriages. What? You mean you don't look at other people's carts, sorting, sco scoping out their items and using what you see to parse out their backstory? No, Dustin, just you. I guess it is true what my mother always said. Just because you're talking about people doesn't mean they're talking about you. Well said, Nomadic Southern Baptist. Well said indeed. And we'll see you next time.